it is Friday the 11th of August and I thought I would do a follow-up video to my day in the life of a writer video. Now that particular one seems to be my most popular video um, on my entire channel and I got a comment at the, ba at the bottom of that video saying that uh, people were really enjoying it and um, I got one specific comment that said that they were using my video as inspiration um, and that they were finding it really inspiring in terms of their own work and that's just amazing like that gives me like so many nice feelings <laughs> that my video might be helping inspire another writer that's just fantastic um, so I wanted to do a follow-up because I feel like a um, it'll be really cool if I can help inspire more people and B, I think that my work in terms of what I'm actually doing at the moment has moved on quite a lot from where I was when I filmed the other one. I was doing a lot of research before and now I'm more into the actual writing process and also I'm doing things like finding all the photography for the inside and the cover of the book. I am think I'm doing more kind of marketing stuff for the book in terms of trying to promote it. So... I thought that might be a little bit more interesting or maybe not more interesting but might be interesting alongside my first video to kind of show you how um, I am getting on with that and I also thought I would show you some of the processes of how how I work in terms of how I manage my workload how I get myself motivated for the day um, and how I keep myself on track in terms of my targets and my goals um, because for me I mean I'm 29 I'll be 30 next year and I feel like it's taken all of my working life so far which is about kind of nine years to work out how I work the best so if I can give some tips to some younger people who are maybe struggling with motivation or with finding a way that works for them then hopefully you know you might get some tips um, from what I do for the day. I'm also considering in the future doing a bit of a desk tour. Um, I don't want to put it in this video because I don't want to cram too much into one. But if you're interested in that, if you'd like to see my writing desk, um, there's a few little bits on it that I'm actually looking at it now. <laughs> I'm talking. There's a few bits on it that have got stories behind them. And there's little trinkets. I have inspiration. Um, all that kind of stuff. So if you do want to see that, then um, give me a comment below um, or give it the video a thumbs up and then either way I'll know. Um, I'm not using that as a way just to get likes, by the way. If you prefer to do a comment underneath, then do that. I'm absolutely fine with that. So <laughs> let's get on with it, shall we? So rather than have my breakfast downstairs and end up starting work really late, I've actually got a lot of stuff to get through today. So I have brought my breakfast up to the office with me. Look at this. I've got, <laughs> it looks, I can't even say what it looks like. It's very interesting. It's basically um, a wrap with banana and peanut butter in and then pieces of wedges of apple. And I just thought I'd decorate it nicely on the plate to make it more appetizing rather than just shoving it all on. So <laughs> that's what I did. And then I've got my C mug, which is like a Scrabble piece. So yeah, I've got myself a nice cup of coffee in there, which coffee never looks appetizing, does it? Especially when you drink instant like I do. People are gonna be like, what? A writer drinking instant coffee? I know it sounds like sacrilege, but I actually do just really love instant coffee. Um, I didn't grow up with posh coffees. I didn't grow up with a Nespresso machine or anything like that. We grew up with good old fashioned Nescafe and semi-skimmed milk. <laughs> so that's what I drink. It is 8.58 and I still need to do my to-do list for the day. So I'm gonna start off with that first. Okay, so this is my planner. Um, it's kind of, it's one of these. It's a Q Connect, things to do today planner and it's got 115 pages and the pages just look like this it's got a date at the top but I don't usually do that by actual days of the week I tend to do that by weeks because I find that um, if I do things by day I don't actually fill up an entire sheet so it's easier for me to do a weekly list and then I can tick them off over the course of the week so then you've got 
priority here, which is a little tiny column which allows you to assign a priority to your tasks. Again, I don't generally tend to use that. I actually use that as a box for ticking um, items off. Then there's a the list bit where you actually write out what you need to do. And then here it says phone completed. Now, again, I don't generally tend to use those. It would be better if it was just priority and then a whole list, but I customise it to how it works for me. So let me see if I can find you an old an old list. Okay, this is a good one to show you. Um, I have to be careful what I show because some of the work that I'm doing at the moment um, isn't live, so I can't really go into too much about what that is because... Um, I just can't but this is um a pretty much pretty standard uh to-do list from um it's actually from february <laughs> so you'll have to excuse me on that but um this is what my to-do list ends up looking like at the end of the week um so you can see there's a lot of scratching out on it there's a lot of crossing out um but you can see here like here are all the ticks of the work that i've done but here you can see i've got things like uh youtube editing uh, 2,000 words written about Mary Isham. Um, she's one of the ladies that I'm writing about in my book. Um, look at documents at the Rylands Library for Catherine. And then I've got um, a couple of other just tiny bits down there, really. So that's kind of how I write the list. I'll write it all out as I kind of think of it. Um, I don't really have a priority for things. I tend to make a decision on the morning as to which one of these I'm actually going to go going to do and then once I have um, decided what I'm going to do I will work on that until it's finished or until it's at a point that I can get it to that day and then I'll tick it off and then move on to the next thing. Yeah so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over the list that I had for this week and I'm going to see what there is left to finish this week and then I'm going to choose what things I'm going to assign for today's work. <laughs> So I've got on my list, I've got right up to 50,000 words. So at the moment, um, I'm on, oh God, you can't see. I don't know if you can see that just there. Oh yeah, kind of, it's, I'm at 44,000 words at the moment on my manuscript. And so I really want to get myself up to 50 today. So that's the first thing. And I've written it there because it is the first priority for the days to try and get my word count up. The second item is answer T regarding emails and website. Now that's my freelance contract. The third item which we can do and um, which I will film is sorting out the photography for my book and um, going through the list um, and getting the details such as the artist and the date because um, my book is going to be in hardback which is really exciting. Uh, it's going to have a dust jacket on the front um, and so it will have a cover art. It needs cover art doing for it. So I've got some paintings or photographs of paintings um, that I would, I think I would like to have on the front. I've got a, like a vague idea. So yeah, one of the things I'm doing at the moment is trying to gather all the images together. Um, as well as having images for the book cover, I can also have, oh, <laughs> Tom's uh, just messaging me. Oh yeah, as well as having the cover photographs, I can also have up to 30, or is it 35? It's either 30 or 35 black and white images in the book as well. So what I've been doing is working on figuring out what I want those 30 images to be, as well as trying to gather them up. So I'll go into that a little bit more and I'll show you the some of the photographs and, and the stuff that I'm doing a bit later on with that. And then the final point on my list today, which won't take long, that's why it's right at the bottom, is to brainstorm some Select Specs ideas and email Nikki. Uh, Nikki's my editor at Select Specs. Um, I do some freelance work for them. I write articles for their lifestyle um, and fashion magazine. I just want to brainstorm some ideas and run them past her. It's now 20 past nine. Um, I've spent a lot of time sorting out my to-do list and talking to you guys. I think what I'm going to do now is I might mount the camera on the tripod um, and just kind of do a little bit of a montage of me just kind of getting on with my work. Oh. Right, this is my research folder and this is where I have all of the information <laughs> relating to my women, 
Um, so I have an overall sheet here first, which says all of the information about the women that I'm talking about in my book. I then have a load of general stuff, um, which is just like, um, just little tidbits of research and things that I've gotten. And then further on back, I've got um, transcripts from books that I've read and written notes about. So this one, for example, is by Judith Schneid Lewis, and it's in the family way, childbearing in the British aristocracy from 1768 to 1860. Um, and those are all the notes that I've written from that book. So in the last video, you'll have seen where I was reading, finding relevant information, and then noting it down for future use. But yeah, these are all, so those are all like kind of general texts that I've read and taken notes from. And then underneath here, I've got, I don't know if you can actually see that there, but I've got tabs, um, like dividers, um, and I've got a divider for each of my ladies that I'm talking about. And then I've got all the kind of information relating to them. So I have a timeline for each woman, which gives all of the major events in their life, their marriage, their birth, their death. So yeah, that's all of their information. So yeah, that's... This is kind of like my Bible, really. If I lost this, I would be up a creek without a paddle, put it that way. I actually, I work really well with writing, with actually physically writing things out. It's a way that I found that I recall information really well, and then I can flick through and, and get all the information from. So that's what I'm going to do now. Um, I'm actually doing Catherine and George Harry Gray today. Um, what are we on? 44,170 words and I always write that down or I try to remember to write that down at the beginning of the day so that I can see how many I've actually written throughout the course of the day so checking in again <laughs> um, it's 10 to 11 so I am just about ready for my second coffee of the day I have written 800 words so far this morning I'd like to hit, hit over into that 45,000 word marker before I have another coffee. So I've got about two, 300 words to do and then I'm gonna let myself have another coffee. Um, this is kind of one of the things that I do. It's one of the ways that I motivate myself. So I will say, right, you have to get a thousand words written and then you can have a piece of chocolate or you can get 300 words done and then go and make a cup of coffee. And rather than me using that coffee as an excuse to procrastinate my work, I actually will use something as simple as going and making a cup of coffee as a reward for hitting a very small milestone in the day. And I've done that since I was at university. I found it really helpful when I was at uni. So that's a little tip from me as to how I actually managed to keep myself motivated and to get things done throughout the day. So yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to write these 300 words and then once I've smashed the 45,000 word barrier, I'm going to go make a coffee. So I'll catch back up with you then. We are now, <laughs> it's actually nearly 12 o'clock, it's 11.52. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a break now. I'm going to go down, I'm going to make myself another coffee. Um, I'm not hungry yet. I think because the um, banana and apple that I had I don't think I actually finished eating that until nearly 10 o'clock, so I've only, that's only a couple of hours ago. So I'm not going to have anything to eat, but I am going to go, I'm going to have a coffee, and I'm going to actually sit down on the couch downstairs in my living room, and I'm going to watch an episode of something on YouTube. And I'm going to do that because I need a break from the computer anyway, and this is usually when I would have my lunch break. 
So I'm going to, like I say, have a break from the computer, maybe have half an hour off, um, and then I'm going to come back and get back on it again. And the reason why that wire is crossed in is so that they wouldn't have very far to fall. things about working from home is that you find yourself doing um, housework or bits to do with your life or this that and the other when you probably should be having a total break <laughs> so when I said I was gonna watch a YouTube video and just chill out for half an hour I'm actually decided I'm gonna do a shopping list and a meal plan for the next week so that's what I'm gonna do I've got myself another coffee I've got I'm actually watching some ghost adventures Little known fact about me, I actually am really interested in the paranormal. So I like programs like Most Haunted, Ghost Adventures and stuff like that. So I'm actually going to watch an episode of that. I watch it for entertainment more than anything else. Um, but I'm going to watch an episode of that while I do my meal plan. I'm not going to show you any of the freelance stuff that I'm doing just because um, I haven't got permission from my freelance manager to film any of that stuff and because the company isn't yet live there's all this that and the other stuff that I don't really want to show on there so take it from me <laughs> that I'm going to have a half an hour break from writing the manuscript and I'm going to address some emails and then um, go to the supermarket with Tom and then I will come back and pick up the camera again and continue filming this um, day in the life of a writer again um, once I get back from the supermarket. Okay, so I am back from the supermarket. Um, Tom came, we went, did all the shopping. Um, I've actually filmed the process of going to the supermarket as well for another video, but I'm not sure which one will go up first, either this one or that one. So um, if I've already made it live, I'll put a little link to it. Um, but it's basically about how much it costs us to do our groceries here for the week. So yeah, filmed that. So that's productive in a way. I've managed to make going shopping for the week productive because <laughs> I've got a YouTube video out of it. So that's pretty good. Have had a couple of messages back from my freelance boss. So I'm just going to answer them for him, from him and just get myself back into it. And then I am going to start ca carrying on with my writing all of my words up. Oh, I'm back again. It's now nearly four o'clock, um, so it's been about an hour and a half since I last checked in. Um, and I've just hit, let's have a look, 46,185 words. Yay! <laughs> so, so it's four o'clock now. I'm not going to hit 50 by the end of the day, obviously. Um, but I did say at the beginning that I didn't think I was going to do. I'm not finished with the section that I'm writing, which is really good because it means I've got more to write. Um, I think I will probably get up to 46,500 by the time I finish reach, reading, uh, writing this section. But you never know, I might even get more in. So I'm just going to keep going. This is what I'm working off at the moment, which is all of my notes, which are from the exhibition at Dunham Massey. So I'm kind of working through that at the moment. And um kind of copying bits in and citing the exhibition where i need to or where i want to and the rest of the time i'm just kind of writing it all up in my own words and stuff which i can do oh, i'm getting tired now it's five past five i haven't had my coffee yet <coughs> this is the problem i'll start i'll say to myself just finish that section in half an hour and then you can stop and have a break i'll finish the section i'll look up and like an hour and a half will have gone by Time seems to just fly by so quickly when I'm writing. So it's five past five. I think I've literally done as much writing as I can today. I really don't feel like I can write anymore. I'm now on 46,876. So I'm like 150 words off reaching 47, which is making me want to carry on, but I honestly would have to find somewhere now to write some extra work like all of the bit that I was wanting to write about George Harry and Catherine that section's all written now so I would just be writing 150 words for the sake of it so I'm gonna stop no I'll go make myself a coffee and then um, I will come back up and we'll have a look at some of the photography together and then I'll finish for the day so I'm back I've got myself 
of coffee. So I'm having a coffee in my Mrs. Ferg mug. And I've got myself a couple of the French Jaffa cakes. They're not like uh, McVitie's ones, but they're more or less the same. So now we're going to do some work on the photographs. So here's all the kind of stuff that I do to do with my book. And here we've got images for book. And then there's one here that says front cover. So if we go in there, here are the kind of images that I am thinking, kind of considering at the moment, putting on the front cover of the book. So let's have a look at them. That is a painting of Mary Close. I hope you can see it. That's better. There's a little bit of a reflection before. That's a painting of Mary Close, who um, is one of the ladies that I'm writing about. That's one of the ones that I would really like on the front cover. There's that one. I've got two here. I've got this one of Elizabeth and I've also got that one of Elizabeth. Now I think this one's going to be better because that one, this one here, let me just get rid of that one. This one is a lot more, um, it's, a, it's more vibrant. You can see more detail about her. But also she's got a stylus in her hand down here, as you can see. And she's also got hold of a book. And this is a painting that was done to reflect the work that she'd actually done on Beaver Castle, which is why you can see some of the house in the background. Um, and it's kind of a, a painting that was made to show how much hard work she was putting into the house. So I think that would look really lovely on the cover. I think that with that I'm kind of imagining like a, a almost like a collage of them like overlaying each other you know like almost like cut out and overlaid on each other so that's Elizabeth and that's Mary The next job on the list is to have a look at the full document that I have of the pictures that I want to use. Image list, there we go. Um, so then what this is, is you might see, you might be, just be able to see some numbers. I'm allowed up to 30, 30 pictures. Um, so I've got a list here of all of the pictures that I think I want to put in the book. So, for example, Mary Isham, um, this will also be on the cover. Number two, Justinian Isham, eighth baronet. Three, Mariette Isham. So, Mariette is the eldest daughter of Mary and Justinian. Now, I don't actually currently have a, a photograph of her painting, um, but I've been in touch with Lamport Hall a couple of times, and I'm hoping that they're going to come back to me. And then there's Justinian, which is her Mary's eldest son, and Charles, which is Mary's youngest son. So, where it's in green... Um, those are where I've already secured that painting and I've got the rights and everything's agreed. So as you can see for Lamport and Mary, what I've basically tried to do is I've tried to section up my pit, my photographs um, so that I know I've got like an equal number of images for each of my women. So those are the five that I'm doing for Lamport and Mary. Harriet and Granville, I've got, this is the Thomas Barber one image is the one of her in the turban. So I just need to sort that out and then I can say that I've got that one. Lord Granville Leveson Gower by Thomas Lawrence from the Yale Centre for British Art. I've got that and that's under a, com a Commons licence so I can use that. Now there is a painting somewhere of Harriet and Granville playing with their children. I actually need to research this image because I've seen it in a book but I'm not sure where it's from. And I'm not trying to be disrespectful by not putting titles into this. It is literally a list that is just for my own personal use and so I'm not writing out titles and everything. That just doesn't make sense. And then we go on to Beaver Castle. I've got all of my images for them because obviously I've photographed them myself. So I've got Children of the Duke and Duchess. Um, I've got Elizabeth Manners an early portrait, Duke of Rutland an early portrait, Portrait. Elizabeth Manners, the Chatelaine of the House. This will also be on the cover. That's the one that I've shown you. And Bradgate Park, as it was, I have a photograph but can't seem to contact owner, is what I've written there. That can actually turn to green because I found a lovely chap who runs a website. Um, I'll link it down in the description, but it's called lostheritage.org and it is fantastic. Seriously, if you're into country houses and you like history and you enjoy looking at photographs 
of old country houses you have got to check out this guy's website it's incredible him and he had a postcard of Bradgate and he said that I could um, use use the photograph of it in the book as long as I credited him which again of course I will do um, so I've got that one now so that can turn to green so let's save the document so that's kind of my list um i know that probably was really really boring although some of the things that i thought were really boring in my last um video people really liked so i hope you did like that or got something from it that's basically the process for gathering images together for a non-fiction book um i decide what i want i'm responsible for finding them and making sure that they're all um either copyright free or that i have purchased the license to be able to use them so all I'm going to do now, I think, is photographer for book, look at list, get details including artist and date. Um, I'm not actually going to do that bit just yet. I'm going to scratch that off and I'm going to do that in a few weeks when I know exactly what all of my images are going to be. Because at the moment, to do it now just seems a bit like hard, hard work when I could be spending my time doing something else instead. It's now quarter to six. So I'm going to finish my coffee. I'm going to eat my Jaffa cakes because I still haven't eaten my Jaffa cakes yet. Um and i'm going to finish off that little bit of work and then i'm going to stop for the evening so that's it um i hope that today's video has been instructional or inspiring or has just been interesting to watch um i'm hoping that this will be as good as the other one because like i say people seem to have really taken something away from my other video which i'm really really pleased about so i'm hoping this kind of does the same if there's any questions that you want to know um any kind of ways that i work or anything that i do in particular as part of my writing process then please do feel free to ask in the comments um i'm always open to answering questions as long as they're kind <laughs> As long as they're not mean <laughs> then i will reply to you <laughs> so anyway i hope you have a lovely day and i will see you again soon bye sorry i thought i'd finished but the very final thing um i did want to show you is my list for the day so i did my ideas and sent them off to nikki i've literally just finished that now um, as the last job for the day for the photography i had a look at my list and i put the prices together so that's good I answered T regarding the emails, that's the freelance contract that I've sorted. And the top one, I ticked it off because I did start on 44170 and I finished on 48800. So I have done for, I have done 2500 words today. So that's not bad for the day. So I've ticked it because if I've actually managed to write words and I've got my word count up, then that's pretty good going. So I'm not going to give myself a cross because that would then encourage negativity. <laughs> We're all about staying positive. So yeah, I just wanted to show you that before the end of the day. That's what I do. I love it on days like that when I can uh, take everything off. That's what I'm looking for every day. Okay. I'm going now, by the way. <laughs>